It's time to go on the record with WRAL News. Good evening, I'm Deborah Morgan and this is On the Record and Life After Basketball. As we wait to see who will take the ACC men's basketball crown, we catch up with a man who has been in the ACC championship game and won it 15 times. Tonight, he will not be on the court. This is the first season in 42 years without legendary Duke basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski at the helm. Only on WRAL, I go one-on-one -on -one with Coach K to see what he's doing now. To see him so content, talking about family, friends, and enjoying life so fully was fantastic. Coach K shared with me the moment he realized he made that break, when he could stop always thinking about basketball like he had for 42 years at Duke, and truly see what was happening all around him. It was his granddaughter Carly's graduation last spring. It was beautiful, and you know, sometimes graduations can go long and whatever, <laughs> but it was beautiful. And on the way back, I'm driving with Mickey, my wife, and I said, you know, that was really good. And I said, you know, something happened to me during the event that was weird. He said, what was that? He said, I said, I was only thinking of the event. Being present. You yes. Can, you can be present now. Just, uh, and I have so much to be present for or with with my 10 grandkids, my three daughters and their family, and you know so many of the friends and uh, people that we've uh, become so close with. Spending time with family is high on the list of reasons of why Coach K decided it was time to step aside. You know, retirement often means you take it easy, relax. At 75 years old, Mike Krzyzewski may not be coaching, but he's not really slowing down. Request. This is, you know, all the presidents that we we're fortunate to meet with. Wow. Look around Coach K's office at Duke, and it's like going to a museum. And then with Dean, mm. with Jimmy, Jim Valvano, who were, were like brothers. Each picture and memento sharing a piece of his story. Yeah, I get, I get chills thinking of with Kobe, and mm -hmm. thanks for all the golden moments together. You're the best. Aww. And, uh, I love that relationship. National championships, the Olympics, so many accolades and meaningful occasions, the walls of his large office can barely fit them all. When you do have a moment where you're just thinking and all of a sudden you might focus on one of the pictures or whatever, and I like that. But don't think being in these surroundings means Mike Krzyzewski lives in the past. I'm being honest, I do not miss coaching. I've loved what I've done my whole life. In order to do what you love, you don't always do everything that you love. You know, time's precious, especially as you get older. You know, I want to make better use of my time for me and my family. Coach K, his wife of 53 years, Mickey, and his three daughters, whom he calls his starting five, have grown into an extended and still very close family. So how much do you revere the role of grandpa? Uh, or is that what they call you? You can't, you can't say grandpa. You got to say poppy. Poppy. Okay. Yeah. And uh, no, I love it. He has ten yeah, grandchildren, uh, and yes, um, some of them play basketball. Yesterday, I watched two of my grandsons in two different games. Actually, I'm getting to spend more quality time with some of them than I did with my own daughters. I, I like the fact that we're, you know, we have those relationships. Do they ask for your advice playing basketball? A little bit, yeah. You know, but I'll goof with them a little bit. Or if they're at our house, I'd say, you know, Quinn, you yeah, know, I was watching you on defense. You know, I don't know why you have your hands up here. <laughs> you should have your hands down here. I find, you know, even when I coached, you know, people think of us just yelling at, peop at our guys and that. But humor, humor plays a big part of teaching but also developing a relationship. Now, as a parent, as a grandparent, what advice as Coach K would you give to parents and grandparents out there who want their children to be the next star at Duke? Yeah, well, just to, you know, one, the youngster has to have fun in whatever he or she is, is doing. And don't always ask him how many points you scored or did you win, that, uh, like, did you have fun? Did you play hard? Don't attach your ego into what your, your kid is doing. That's a big mistake. 
If you make somebody better, you're going to be better. Shashevsky's idea of retirement is not playing golf or sitting on the beach. He stays busy with a radio show and speaking engagements, which keep him studying leadership and teamwork. When thinking of retirement and talking to people, one word came up a lot was to have purpose. Purpose. That when you get up in the morning, what's your purpose? I'm not trying to figure out how to attack Beheim zone or <laughs> somebody's press or think of the most intricate out-of-bounds play anymore. I don't think about any of those things. But uh, uh, I do think about teamwork, leadership, how to have people come together. A lot of companies were not together for two or three years, how you develop relationships again. It's incredibly interesting. And... Uh, I, I've loved that. And really similar talents that you already have, so it's just using them in a different way. Yeah, you know, so many things you do in sport is similar to what you would do in business, and basically you want to get people together to optimally use their talents to accomplish a goal. But the, the, the key thing with that is where they would want to do it again. A lot of times people define leadership the way I just did, but I add the thing, well, I can be a dictator and make you do it, but you never want to do it again. If we can do it in a way where we want to do it again and have learned from that, then that's leadership that leads to growth. Great advice. For 30 years, I've covered ACC tournaments and Final Fours, and over the years, I've spoken to Coach K so many times. This was my favorite conversation I've had with Coach. To see him enjoying life outside of the pressures of being Coach K was great. And to see him light up when talking about being poppy, <laughs> that really says it all, doesn't it? He seems so content with where he is right now. But that contented feeling was challenged about 18 years ago. Many fans may remember when Coach K considered leaving Duke. When I turned down the Laker job in 2005, that was the toughest decision. Coming up, how coaching Team USA helped Mike Krzyzewski scratch the itch to work with the pros. And later, the other coach in the Krzyzewski family who fits perfectly into Coach K's retirement plan. <laughs> Coach Kay and his wife, Mickey, are lifetime ambassadors for Duke University, and that's why we, he will always have an office inside Cameron Indoor Stadium. The walls are filled with dozens of pictures, handwritten notes, and so much more, each one with a unique story about a special moment in Kate, Co Coach Kay's career inside and outside of basketball. Um, I like a lot of pictures, uh -huh. and so... Uh, when each picture, when you look at it, has a story. You know, I, get, I get chills thinking of with Kobe and mm -hmm. thanks for all the golden moments together. You're the best. Aww. And uh, I love that relationship. And LeBron and Kyrie and our, our family after we won in London the night. Uh, my whole family was in uh -huh. London for the, uh, for the gold medal game. And then obviously, uh, the national championship trophies. The letters we receive, really, you get thousands of letters. So there are three groups of nuns in different oh, parts of the country that write me, and then I'll send them stuff, and they, those, those are cool. This is you know, all the presidents that we were fortunate to meet with. And uh, 41, we became good friends, Yeah. Uh, wow. which was an honor. And then some of the all-time great coaches uh, Coach Newell, mm. Mr. Iba, mm. Coach Wooden. Oh, wow. You know, uh, just I've been very lucky. And then my, you know, again, I didn't have a long military career, <laughs> but uh, I was, I graduated from West Point and I was a captain. So that actually is my helmet. Oh, I, wow. Never in combat, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. and I was an artillery officer. And these are coins, usually generals or command sergeant majors. Uh, they'll have a coin, and uh, if, if it's an honor for them to meet you, they'll give you the coin. Oh, my goodness. And, and so we save them. There are hundreds of them. Oh, wow. And uh, obviously, this is the best team I've ever been on. 
the starting <laughs> the starting five in uh, the order of the long oh, leaf. You just yeah, that. with yeah. Uh, Governor Cooper, he yeah. couldn't have been nicer yeah. and got a key to the city in case you want to go anywhere in Durham. I <laughs> I got the key. Okay. Uh, and one of the cool things about the book is, let me find a page here. Each player wanted a page, so mm. then LeBron would say something. So it's a nice memory with Carmelo and Kevin Durant and Kyrie. So I, I have so many great remembrances, yeah. I mean, and... Uh, well, and this gave you your fix so you didn't leave Duke. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, yeah. I remember those days when you were considered... Yeah, it was, you know... You were recruited very heavily anyway for the NBA. When I turned down the Laker job in 2005, that was the toughest decision uh, because I was, I didn't know how much longer I would coach, maybe another decade, and maybe I'd want to do something different. And a couple months after uh, turning it down, I was offered the job of being the national coach, and uh, couldn't have happened. Couldn't have happened better. Yeah, you know, these are the chairs that we sat on, uh, and we buy them, and then each of the players gets one, and we get a couple that oh, we. Nice. So all the chairs are from national, the national oh. championship. Even these. They still have the glitter. Yeah, they're, well, they'll always have the memory. I'll move my bag here. And these are the two stools that, you know, you sit on. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you, you keep going through all this. and It's wonderful. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's an office full of a lot of <laughs> good stuff. It must make it feel so cozy. Pictures are, are good. Mm -hmm. Pictures are, 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 are really good. Mm -hmm. Pictures are good for his life after basketball. What memories there? After 42 years of being the head coach of the Duke Blue Devils, Mike Krzyzewski had a succession plan. He would coach one more season, and then John Shire, a former player and national champion, would take over in 2022. What an ending Coach K's career had. His final game, a Carolina Duke Battle of the Blues in the Final Four. I'm glad people put a lot about North Carolina and Duke rivalry. But the biggest disappointment for me is not playing a national championship game. Whoever we would have lost to would have been a di disappointment. I thought it was an epic game, and I said something after the game that it's an honor to be in the arena. Would you have changed anything about your coaching that day? Probably one of the officials. <laughs> uh, I, would have, I would have changed. We were right there, and we missed, and they hit and they won. And sometimes it's just that, that simple. And Coach K's legendary career has come to a close. I love that it ended, not obviously we would have won the national, I've loved that it ended at that level. It didn't end where we didn't make the tournament or we got upset. You know, I was proud of my guys. They were balling like crazy afterwards. That made me feel good because that means it meant that much. You know, when we uh, talk about big wins and big losses, a tough loss for me was my last game in Cameron. It was built to be way beyond what it should be, and about 100 of our former players were back, and, and we had already clinched the regular season, and so we still want to beat Carolina, and it's the last game. There was so much hoopla about the game. I fell into a little bit of a trap, not a little bit of a trap, but a trap that I should not have fallen into and in that we were prepared, but I didn't prepare them to the level that they should have been prepared, especially you're going to feel that. You know, I could have helped them. That atmosphere was, was when different. we talk about epic, that was epic. Yeah, and besides, North Carolina was great, and they are good. <laughs> really good. And then adding the pressure, especially late in the game when it was a close game, after the game, I did what human beings do. I felt that I was let down by, by the, like I would not have let down my coach. And, and that was the wrong reaction. A lot of times when I don't give the right reaction to a team after watching tape or spending time, 
that night or you stay up most of the night, you know, sometime like three in the morning it hits you like, all right, you were an idiot. It's all on you. What a learning experience, you know. Again, you lost that game, but there's still more to go. And then I had to try to get my team back from what I put them in. The loss put them in one spot, but I put them in a worse spot. And it took a while. It took us, you know, we didn't play that well in the ACC tournament. We almost won it. But by the NCAAs, we were back. <laughs> Going through that experience made us tougher, but I would have rather not have gone through <laughs> that experience. You know, and it shows, coach 1,600 games or more, you win a lot and you still make mistakes. Would you have rather won that last game in Cameron or been at the Final Four? And, no. I, and both is not an answer. No, well, they, don't, you sound like my wife and my daughters. <laughs> yeah, I want to win them all, you know? I want to win them all. Because, you know, but had I, you not lost that game in Cameron, do you think you would have still been in the Final Four? I don't know that. Yeah, but it's a good point because we had a crushing defeat. And then we responded. It took us a while and it made us better for the tournament. I agree with that. I would have liked to have had the leadership challenge of winning and getting us tougher and still getting to the, the Final Four. So I'm not gonna answer your question, okay. I guess is what I'm saying. Fair enough. How important is it to have Mickey there with you? Well, this last season, I, I would credit Mickey more than me with it. And it was the last go around. And uh, so she, as close as she's been all the time, she, I think, became even closer. And I think she wanted uh, to be there for me if I, when I needed that, and I usually needed it. I really had, a lot of times, tunnel vision in preparation. And sometimes she says, you know, get out of the tunnel. You need to look at this. I said, I can't get out of the tunnel very long here, <laughs> or else we're going to, we may not end up in a good, good spot. She's been a great partner. And, you know, we've been together for 53 years. And uh, graduation day, West Point, we got married. How proud are you to see your former players now in head coaching? Yeah, yeah. no. I, you know, when I started coaching, I did it because I loved the game. and. I, I just love coaching. I, I never imagined how good it would be to have my former players as friends and for them to have families and ki you know, kids. And, and then so many of them would go into coaching. And the other thing, Deborah, they're more current. They're younger. You know, so for me, that's something I had to try to keep learning to stay current. I kept getting older, and the group I had to coach was the same age. You know, it was so interesting talking to him about those last few games. You could still see him reflecting on his decisions, how you can always be better and wanting that challenge, right? He told me one of the most important philosophies is next play. Things happen, good and bad. You learn as much as you can from them, and then it's on to the next play. After the intensity of 42 years at Duke, 47 years as a head coach, to see him soaking up time with family while still helping Duke and continuing to teach others, his next play seems to be a great fit. When we come back, what happened when Coach K returned to Cameron as a fan and how a special retirement gift keeps Coach on the move. On Valentine's Day, Mike Krzyzewski returned to Cameron Indoor Stadium for the first time since he retired from coaching. <laughs> Coach K and his wife, Mickey, entered the arena to big cheers from the Cameron Crazies. Until that moment, Coach K watched every game from afar, saying he didn't want to be a distraction for the new coach, John Shire. Coach K's visit fell on the same night his former assistant, Mike Bray, coached his last game in Cameron as head of the coach, as head coach of Notre Dame. Coach K has deep roots in Durham, home of Duke University. It is not part of the retirement plan to move anywhere else. It is, yeah, we love Duke. We love Durham and North Carolina. This has been a, an amazing place uh, to raise our family and all three of our 
like our daughter's families are here within 10 minutes of us. One family lives seven tenths of a mile away. And uh, so uh, that's unusual. You know, uh, we're very, very lucky to have that. And as a result, you're never, uh, <laughs> you always have an activity that you could go to. Activities like visiting his granddaughter's Montessori school or watching his grandchildren do ninja and sitting in the stands as part of the whole Krzyzewski family watching his four grandsons play basketball. No pressure for those middle school coaches, right? Well, one of the places very important to Coach K in the Durham community is just off campus, the Emily Krzyzewski Center. The center is named after his mother and serves about 2,000 children each year. Since 2006, the nonprofit has helped students from low-income families focus on education and going to college. Well, another member of his family has four legs and his furry. He's Coach the Dog. We felt you needed something to uh, train. And so we want you to meet the new member of your family, Coach. The Blue Devils gifted the eight pound, eight week old silver lab puppy to Coach K and his wife Mickey last spring. The team named the dog Coach. That puppy is now 85 pounds and Coach K spends a lot of time in Duke Forest, Forest on long walks with him. When we got Coach at our basketball banquet in April, last April, we were surprised. You mean a 75 year old cu couple <laughs> got a lab puppy? Are they nuts? He's really a good athlete. I love him, and uh, we're, we're happy we got him. Does it get confusing with the name Coach around your house? <laughs> no, I was never called Coach. I was called a lot of different names in my house. Uh, some of them were nice. Coach K says Coach the dog fills the house with life. So much we talked about we couldn't include here. You can listen to my entire conversation with Coach K on Life After Basketball in the WRL Daily Download podcast. It's available now in Apple Podcasts or go to WRL.com, search podcast. If you have something to say about tonight's conversation, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash WRL. Email us your comments or questions or criticisms on the record at WRL.com. I'm Deborah Morgan. Thanks so much for joining us tonight.